Okay, welcome back everybody. So we had just finished on the last presentation talking about uh, some of the various data elements and structures, right? We mentioned students, courses, and grades, and then the interaction between them and the linkages. Remember, you have to have that primary key or unique identifier. So we talked a little bit about the data defin definition language, and I was saying at the close of the last session that it's kind of like in the old days where to work the operating system, we called it DOS. We'd have to type in our own commands like print and the file name, etc. Uh, today, we just do that by going a file print, right, on our uh, computer. That's a graphical user interface, much easier. In, seek, in uh, say, a SQL database, you will use SQL commands, and that's part of the data definition language instructions and commands. Realize there's also a data dictionary. And so this is another important step to creating a database, this data dictionary, because then you have a description of the data stored in that database. So each cell, say, say picture an Excel spreadsheet, which you would use as your database, each cell should have a definition of where that data came from, how long that data is retained, what that data is used for, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, what the security requirements are. That's a data dictionary. It's describing the data stored in that database uh, cell by cell, right, for example. And that's a data dictionary, very uh, important uh, function. The, um, <coughs> and so the activity of storing and retrieving data is uh, an important function of the DBMS that we had talked about. It's again that interface between the application program and the database and you, the user, right? And we're going to look at a picture of that in just uh, a moment. So we, when we're requesting data, we're requesting it through our DBMS. Now, one important point I wanted to mention was as a, an infor information systems manager, you'd want to ask about concurrency control. So with concurrency control, myself and somebody else may be going to retrieve the same data, or I may be updating data <coughs> while the other person is trying to retrieve data. Are they going <coughs> to, excuse me, are they going to retrieve legacy data that was void of my update? How is that managed? So concurrency control addresses the situation where two or more users or applications are accessing accessing the same record at the same time, so you get a predictable results. This uh, slide here is uh, Figure 5-5 from the book, uh, and it's uh, showing the database activities, whether it's us in a management function or other uh, software using uh, the activities or an application itself. It is going through a DBMS and then accessing uh, the database as well. Again, concurrency control would be important aspect here. <clears throat> okay, so uh, with database activities, we want to, we can manipulate the data and generate reports, um, <coughs> and we're going to do this through a query function. Uh, QBE is query by example. Um, a lot of databases use that. And that's a visual approach to developing database queries or requests. Uh, and so a, a QBE can perform queries and other database tasks by opening windows and clicking on the data or features you want, similar to the way you work with a Windows uh, product now or a graphical user interface, a GUI, as I mentioned that would be a, a, a QBE, right? Uh, and we've uh, talked the database language, right? So in a, <coughs> in a DBMS query, we may type in select star from employee where the job underscore, all right, there's a code there. You'll have to know that language code, but really that's for your analyst to know. Uh, it's for you to ask uh, how they are doing it because it's a specific language uh, that is uh, useful to people that are doing it all the time. Now, um, this uh, is table 5-5.5 5 .5 from the book, uh, and that after a database has been set up and loaded with data, then you can produce these desired reports, documents, other outputs, 
as it transits through the uh, DBMA, uh, D, DBMS because you're doing a QBE, a query by example, to produce your reports along the way. Uh, we don't want to ever forget security. Security should always be first, not last. Uh, and so DBMS security management functions are going to help ensure the data is protected against access by unauthorized user. Remember in CIA, that was, there was confidentiality, integrity, and uh, authentication, right? And so you'd ask yourself, which, which apply here? Ha! Huh. I'm going to leave that as an open question. Fun to think about. Okay. And so um, the, <coughs> the DBS, DBMS security function is that capability to define and enforce user access privileges and control. Remember, uh, a big part of security is role-based access. Who should have access to the data? You want to limit it. Least privilege should always come to mind. And of course, you need to do backup and recovery services uh, for disaster recovery and business continuity purposes along the way as an information systems manager. In addition to that, we want to think about data cleansing along the way. Data cleansing is the process of detecting and correcting or deleting incomplete, incorrect, inaccurate data or Ill irrelevant records. There are lots of ways you can do this. One is have a data retention standard and the data sh is deleted when it exceeds that retention standard except for legal holds or some other regulatory requirement. Um, you want to have the ability to correct and update data, right? I would want to have in my work function a, uh, qu a data quality assurance office who is managing these tasks all the time, right? Uh, and ensuring validation of data as it comes in and as it gets stored and as it leaves along the way. <coughs> and so the cost of performing data cleansing can be pretty high. Uh, and sometimes it's prohibitive for some companies. But what does bad da data give you, right? Uh, bad data doesn't give you information at all. So, and a lot of times, uh, so I would put data quality, data cleansing, quality assurance of the data under the compliance office in my uh, perspective. That's just a recommendation. Okay, data design then. Um, the database should be designed to store all the data relevant to the business. Some people say, hey, let's store everything. I don't want to store everything. I want to store what I need, both from a security perspective and from a business intelligence perspective. So it the, the database design should reflect the business organization and the processes within. So consider things like content, access, the logical structure, right? How should, what I mean by that is how should data be arranged so that it makes sense to a given user? What about the physical organization? Where is the data physically located? Is it in the cloud using a, a maybe a SaaS service or is it on premises in your own database? What's the response time, right? How long, is, how often is the database updated? What, what data do you archive? And of course, we want to remember those security features along the way. These are considerations that you would want to apply. <coughs> You'd also want to consider data modeling. So, uh, for example, take enterprise data modeling. That's a model that identifies the data entities and the data attributes that we discussed earlier that are of the greatest value to the organization. Um, and, and then apply those data definitions to them, how long you retain the data, the data format, the domain values that are valid, and the business rules for use along the way um, as you're designing the data. So the database design uh, has uh, many uh, benefits along the way. And so the model provides a roadmap for building that information system uh, and so you want to be part of that conversation as well. Now, uh, entity relationship diagram. Um, so the term entity ER diagram as a data model is used to analyze and communicate data needs that 
at, at the individual project or the application level. And it's using graphical symbols to identify these entities along the way. Uh, and so ER diagrams ensure that the relationships among the data entities in a database are correctly structured uh, for use. Okay, let's see. Here is <coughs> figure 5-5.8 uh, from the book is an ER diagram uh, for the uh, an order database for a specific organization. So uh, in this database design that we're looking at, one salesperson serves many customers. And so this is an example of a one to many relationship. And the ER diagram shows that each customer can place one to many orders, however many they need, and each order includes one to many line items. And many line items can uh, specify the same product, which is a many to one relationship. Anyhow, kind of neat. Okay, I'm going to cover some uh, quiz items a little bit. Um, remember that a database describes a well designed, organized, and carefully managed collection of data, that information consists of raw facts then that get uh, that analyzed uh, so data is the raw facts information consists of raw facts that are analyzed uh, that a file describes a collection of similar entities that uh, an attribute is a characteristic of an entity and that a domain describes the range of allowable values for a data attribute and a collection of attributes about a specific entity is a record. Uh, just some things I wanted to point out. There are others from this material. Now, um, here's a uh, relational database. A relational database is another type of model. Uh, it is simple but highly useful because it organizes data into collections of two-dimensional tables called relations. These are They have a relationship, and this is a picture of that here. Uh, relation, relational database model. So um, the fundamental characteristics is this columns and rows and that rows are uniquely identified as the primary key. wanted to point that out uh, and that we can still use queries to perform operations, QBE uh, for example. Okay. Now uh, there are some other terms to recall. So selecting involves eliminating rows and uh, according to criteria, projecting involves eliminating columns and joining means combining them. The uh, manipulating database in a relationship database model would look like this. You can read more about that uh, in figure 5.10 in the book. And this is the uh, uh, diagram of what it would look like also in the book and the relationship uh, database system there's that we can use hyperlink tools that are available uh, to create edit manipulate the database along the way now a SQL database uh, is a special purpose program uh, for accessing and manipulating data and the SQL database conforms to ACID properties. That's atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability, uh, which are defined um, uh, in uh, some other works published, but you can read more of that in the book itself. There are uh, sample SQL commands. These are a few of them. This course isn't about, uh, this isn't a SQL course, but I just wanted to show you those are specific commands that you would use uh, in your SQL database. And your SQL programmers learn uh, a powerful query language. And that's why you want to rely on your analysts to walk you through that. Uh, and that um, these are other popular relational database programs. There's MySQL. Uh, and they're just others I wanted you to be aware of, not just uh, uh, SQL. Uh, database as a service, right, is a new, as a popular feature nowadays where the data is stored on a service provider server, say out in the cloud uh, or elsewhere, stored on a service provider servers. And so that's uh, a brave new world that we live in. 
which uh, you always want to consider then data management and data governance in your uh, approach.